uh, we elucidate, uh, elucidated the structure and found that uh, uh, it is what we know today, delta-9 THC. Another compound which we uh, elucidated the structure was cannabidiol, which uh, is surprisingly has no psychoactivity, although from a chemical point of view, it is very close to uh, THC. Uh, by psychoactivity, at that time at least, we uh, meant uh, action on monkeys. We didn't have any other way of uh, finding out whether a compound is uh, uh, active or not. We gave it to rhesus monkeys, and we found that very low doses of THC, but not a single one of the other compounds, caused the monkey, the rhesus monkey, to um, be sedated, fall asleep. My students used to say that that particular monkey took on a professorial position, namely a professor thinking. Well, I hope that professors think a little bit more clearly. But anyway, uh, this was the test. We also looked at the activity of the other compounds together with THC, and at that point, we didn't see any major change. THC was, uh, at that time, the only compound which causes psychoactivity, and this is essentially where we stay today. Uh, we know, of course, that cannabidiol has many other, uh, uh, causes many other effects, but the psychoactivity is basically uh, due to uh, THC. Now, uh, these compounds uh, were investigated as a part of a uh, constituents of a plant, and uh, people looked at the metabolism, pe people looked at the pharmacology, and these were well clarified over the next 30 years. Surprisingly, uh, although we knew quite a lot about uh, these uh, biological effects, it was unknown how THC acts. Um, we thought at the beginning that maybe it acts on an enzyme or on a, rece a receptor or some other biological entity, but uh, most uh, groups thought that the, the effect is nonspecific, whatever that means. And this was until the mid-80s, so it was nearly 20, 25 years after THC was, uh, uh, was isolated and its structure was elucidated. In the mid-80s, Alan Howlett, a young uh, researcher in St. Louis, found that there is actually a receptor, which today we call the CB1 receptor, and a couple of years later, a second receptor was found, uh, which is, uh, was present. It was found in the immune system. It uh, uh, was called the CB2 receptor. And uh, uh, these two receptors are the main ones through which the cannabinoids act. Now, uh, we thought that uh, these receptors do not exist in, in our body because... Uh, uh, there is a plant out there, but these receptors exist because our body knows how and when to uh, stimulate them with, through compounds that our body produces. So we went ahead looking for the endogenous compounds, and these endogenous compounds uh, uh, were indeed, we found them to be present in the brain and later in the periphery. In the brain, we found the first endogenous compound, that was in 1992, uh, almost 30 years after uh, we had isolated uh, uh, THC, we found a compound which, uh, from a structural point of view, was completely different than THC. Uh, we called it anandamide, and it is a derivative of a fatty acid bound to ethanolamine. Uh, a couple of years later, we found the second uh, compound, 2-arachidonoyl glycerol, which again is a derivative of uh, arachidonic acid, but instead of ethanolamine, it has a, a glycerol side chain. These two compounds have uh, been shown to be the major 
uh, endogenous compounds. And um, obviously, THC mimics uh, uh, their activity. So there has been a huge amount of work on the enzymes that uh, uh, synthesize these two compounds and the enzymes that break down these compounds. And today we know quite a bit on all this system, uh, which is uh, known as the endocannabinoid system. And this endocannabinoid system uh, consists of two receptors of the two compounds, anandamide and 2-AG, of the enzymes that synthesize and hydrolyze these compounds. And over the last decade, uh, many groups, including our own, have found that there are many additional compounds which have more or less the same structures fatty acid bound to an amino acid or a derivative of amino acid, none of them uh, uh, causes uh, uh, the psychoactivity the THC does or the anandamide does, the 2-AG does, but they, are, they do have activity. And uh, it is strange that the body does prepare so many of these compounds. There are about several hundred of them, maybe above 200 of them. And it is uh, a major problem, a major question mark, if you wish, why do we, why does our body prepare so many compounds of this type? So uh, this is something that I will be talking uh, in a few moments, but I want to mention another member of the endocannabinoid system, and this is cannabidiol. Cannabidiol uh, uh, is, uh, as I mentioned, closely related uh, closely related to uh, THC, but has no psychoactivity, but it has uh, a huge list of additional activities, and I will, I will be talking about it uh, too. So uh, I want to summarize uh, in one slide uh, some of the activities that are well known to be caused by uh, the uh, cannabinoid, endocannabinoid system. And here... You can see anxiety and appetite and feeding and blood pressure, bone formation, et cetera, et cetera. This is a slide that I prepared a few months ago. Today we know many, many more of uh, these compounds, of these uh, effects, and I don't have the time to discuss each one of them, but I'll try to show you what are the effects of individual constituents of the endocannabinoid system. And... Um, uh, before I go into that, I just want to mention something uh, of uh, major importance. Most neurotransmitters are formed, and uh, the body keeps them in some way or other, uh, waiting for them to be used. And when they are used, normally they cross from the presynapse of the nerve to the postsynapse of the nerve, and there they act. Well, cannabinoids don't do that. They are not present uh, before they are needed. They are synthesized when and where needed. And then at least one of them, 2-AG, goes back from the presynapse, uh, from the postsynapse to the presynapse. And there, by binding to the receptors, uh, it can cause, uh, uh, it can affect the release of uh, other neurotransmitters. So one of the major uh, effects, one of the major things that uh, endogenous cannabinoids do is to regulate the release of other neurotransmitters. Uh, anandamide and 2-AG regulate formation of dopamine, regulate the formation of uh, serotonin, and um, in this way, it seems to be a major regulator of uh, neurotransmitters and possibly of other compounds in the body. Now, uh, I would go through some of the effects of these uh, uh, compounds, and I will start with 2-AG, which uh, uh, is one of the two major endocannabinoids. And I will discuss uh, only one or two effects. And the major one is neuroprotection. Uh, several years ago, uh, together with uh, my uh, colleague, uh, 
Estes Shohami, professor of pharmacology, we found that uh, uh, after brain trauma, the amount of 2-AG in the brain goes up. Within a couple of hours, it can go up about 10 times. It slowly goes down, but uh, uh, it stays at a high level for at least several hours. So we thought that, well, maybe the brain, after being into a trauma, uh, doesn't know what it does and it produces 2-AG, or maybe, which makes more sense, that this is one of the reactions of the brain uh, trying to lower uh, the effects uh, of the brain trauma. So we synthesized uh, uh, 2-AG, and after brain trauma, gave 2-AG uh, to the animal, injected it uh, and not directly into the brain, because 2-AG can cross the blood-brain barrier and go into the brain. We, uh, we injected 2-AG, and we found that, indeed, 2-AG lowers the effect of the brain trauma. And uh, we uh, uh, gave the brain to the histologist, and they found that, indeed, the brain, uh, the damage uh, in the brain was 50% uh, lower when we give 2-AG. And uh, uh, the infarct volume uh, was measured about 24 hours after this closed head injury. So uh, here we have uh, something that the endogenous materials do in the body, and it seems to be a very general uh, phenomenon. The endogenous cannabinoids are helping the body withstand uh, all kinds of damages. In this respect, we can compare it to the immune system. The immune system basically tries to uh, block the effects of foreign proteins, whether they come from microbes or viruses and so on. But not everything is due to foreign proteins. The endocannabinoid system apparently is one of the guardians of our body against uh, damage of, uh, uh, in many different ways. Uh, if uh, uh, you can see at this slide, the brain injury causes formation of glutamate, cytokines, reactive oxygen intermediates, and these can cause neuronal and glial death. They, this can be lowered or maybe prevented uh, by endocannabinoids in some cases. But the, uh, we also see, after brain injury, that there is vasoconstriction. This is, uh, again, uh, something that the body doesn't seem to like and tries to prevent the vasoconstriction, which can cause cerebral ischemia. And we looked at uh, vasoconstriction, the effect of the vasoconstriction, which is formed by compounds called ET1 and thromboxane, and indeed, we found that the endogenous cannabinoids do lower the, uh, the vasoconstriction, but they didn't lower it uh, too much. So we thought maybe, just maybe, there are additional compounds of this type uh, in the brain, in the body, which act in the same way. And uh, now, uh, we're speaking about the regulation of vasodilation. Our body is uh, a lazy one. If it knows how to synthesize a group of materials, it will use these materials uh, as much as possible so they, the body doesn't have to waste energy in um, the synthesis uh, of new types of compounds. They take something we know, and makes small modifications. For example, in my slide, I'm showing you uh, the steroid molecule. And by making small changes in the steroid molecule, which the body has learned how to make, and uses it in many different ways, we can see that making changes uh, on one side leads to androgens and estrogens. Make, uh, making changes at what is called the 11 position, uh, we see corticosteroids. We can see aldosterone, progesterone. So the body uses uh, something that it knows how to uh, synthesize, uses it for 
many different uh, uh, effects which it 